Hello designers! In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a typographic portrait. That means that it's a picture of a person made entirely out of words, like the one that you guys see in front of you. We're going to create a letter size document. Then, we're going to open our personal photo on Photoshop. You want to make sure you crop away any unnecessary parts of the photo, like a busy background. And we want to go and select the photo using our quick selection tool and paste it or drag it over to our letter size document. You can see I'm using free transform here so that I can resize the photo and center the photo on my letter size document. I want to focus primarily on the head and shoulders. I don't want to do a full body. I don't want to focus on anything else um, within the person, just their face. The first thing that I want to do is I want to make my image black and white. So I'm going to image adjustments and black and white so that I can desaturate the image. Then I'm going back to the adjustments menu and I'm selecting an adjustment called posterize which is going to transform my image into broad black, white, and gray areas. And I'm basically using the image as reference here for when I get started making my typographic brushes and start placing my brushes all along the contours of the image. I'm creating another document here. The size doesn't really matter. You can see I have two tabs open right now. And with this document, I'm using the type tool and I'm gonna write up words that remind me of that person. So I'm using a picture of my son and the words that I come to think of for him are smart, silly, funny, cute, you get the gist. So you want to think of like four to five different words that remind you of that person. And you want to go and write them um, with your type tool using an interesting font. Then what I want to do is I want to create a brush out of this word. So I'm going to edit and define brush preset. And what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a custom brush with that same word that I'm going to be using to paint my typographic portrait. Here you can see I'm doing the same thing for the word silly. So I used an interesting font. Then I'm going to go to the edit menu at the top of my workspace. Then I'm selecting Define Brush Preset. And I want to go and name this brush so it makes it easier for me to find. So I'm just going to call it Silly. You can see every time I'm going and creating a new brush, I'm making the previous ones invisible in my Layers panel so that they don't get included with my new brushes. So you want to get in the habit of making your previous brushes invisible so that you can just focus on creating one brush at a time. So you can see now I'm creating a brush for the word funny by again going to edit and define brush preset. And you can see how I'm changing the name so that it reflects the name of the brush. And I'm going to go and repeat myself until I have as many brushes for as many words that I want to use on my portrait. So again, I recommend four to five. Now I'm going back to my original photo that I was using as reference. I'm going to lower the opacity of this photo to about 50% because again, I'm just using it for reference. It's just to guide me. It's not going to show in my final design. You can see I created a new layer and I'm going to call this new layer black parts for the areas that I'm going to focus on in the image that are darker. So looking at the image of my son, you can see that would be the hair, and a few shadows alongside his face. Now I'm using my brush tool and if I scroll all the way down I can see all those brushes that I just made. The brushes are called smart, funny, dinos, silly, and so forth. I want to make sure that I select black as my color and then I'm basically overlapping my brushes and I'm using different sizes. I'm starting off with a pretty large size just so I can try to get as many 
dark areas in the photo as possible and then essentially painting with those typographic brushes alongside all the dark areas in the image. So you can see as I was going down into the ear section, I went and reduced the size of my brush and I'm going to continue reducing it as I go and do the contours of the image and areas alongside the nose and the eyebrows and so forth that are dark. You want to make sure that you are doing this on a separate layer. If you're doing this on the original photo layer, you're messing up because we are going to make the original photo layer invisible in the end. So please make sure you're doing all of your typographic brushes on a separate layer. You can see that I'm using a different brush now called Silly and you can see how the font for silly is a little bit more stylized and I'm making it a little smaller and I'm basically going and overlapping areas in the image um, where I had applied the previous brush and that's perfectly okay. The idea is that you'll be able to see some of the words clearly in your final portrait but it's okay if you overlap and make some of them a little bit more indistinguishable to read because we're going to fix it up in the end. You can also see that I'm like some of the letters are going past the contours of the image but again don't freak out because I will show you in the end how you can clean it up and make it look a little bit more precise. So don't freak out if for example the letter S is going past the ear because that's going to get cropped out in the end. As you work on the dark areas of the image, filling them with the typographic brushes as you've been watching me do, I encourage you guys every so often to make your original photo layer invisible so that you can see your progress. In doing so, you're going to start to see that the contours of the image are going to be more recognizable. Like you can start seeing the edge of the nose, the edge of the hairline, and a little bit of the shoulder area that I'm filling with the typographic brushes so that you can start seeing your progress and how much more of the image you need to fill with the typographic brushes. From here you can start to see that I filled up most of the dark areas in the image with typographic brushes so I'm ready to start working on the grayscale areas. That means the areas that I had grayed out with the posterized adjustment earlier. So now what I'm going to do is I'm changing the color on my swatches to like a gray, a slightly darker gray than that which is already um, showing on my reference image so you can see how I'm dragging it on the on the um, color picker to make it a little bit darker by the way you don't have to leave this gray in the end you'll see how in my final portrait I actually changed the colors using a gradient but for now I'm creating a new layer and I'm calling this layer gray areas and you can see how I'm using more typographic brushes so that I can repeat my process and fill up all the gray areas in the image with the brushes. So the idea is that we're going to have a little bit of gradation and values. We should be going from our lightest possible values, which are the areas in white that we're not really going to touch with our typographic brushes, then the middle areas that I'm working on right now. You can see that I'm using that brush called Dino's to fill in all of those um, gray areas alongside the nose and on top of the brow and then our darkest possible which is what we started off doing so that our image can become a little bit more recognizable. So again this is a very repetitive process so you know just relax and keep clicking away at your mouse. 
And the idea is to start filling this up with as many brushes in the gray areas as possible until your image starts becoming a little bit more recognizable. Now that I have most of my portrait filled up with the different brushes and you can see how I'm just cleaning it up a little bit like doing really small, small typographic brushes along the contours of the nose and so forth, it's time to clean it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and click on my reference image um, thumbnail. Then I'm going to go to the layer marked black areas and I'm making my original photo layer invisible so you can see the marching ants alongside the contours of the image. Then I'm going to the select menu. I'm selecting inverse so that it, the selection goes on the outside of the image and I'm going to hit delete in my keyboard and in doing so you can see how I cleaned it up. So look at that hairline, look at the ears. All those areas look so much neater now because I cleaned up the brushes so they wasn't going past the contours of my reference image. At this point, you want your reference image to be invisible in your layers panel. We don't want it to be visible anymore. So if you were going and doing what I asked you to do, you would basically have all of the image filled out, at least the black and gray areas with typographic brushes. So you can go ahead and delete that layer for all I care. We're now going to be going and adding some gradients and some layer effects to finish off our image. So I selected my original background layer and I'm using my gradient tool so that I can go and add a little bit of color to the background. The color choices you make are completely up to you. I knew that I wanted to use a combination of different blues. Initially I had started off with some dark blue gradients which I changed my mind about later on. The great thing about the gradient tool is that it's non-destructive so that you can always go back and double click on your color stops and select different colors for the gradients if you change your mind, if you realize it's too dark, it's too light or what have you. So you can see how I started off with a dark gradient. Not too happy about it. You're going to see it change momentarily. Now I'm going to the black areas layer and I'm going to FX at the bottom of my layers panel or you can double click on the layer. Either one is fine. And I'm opening up my layer styles and what I want to do is maybe play around with a little drop shadow just to make those layers a little bit darker. You don't have to apply a drop shadow. This is just what I chose to do to try to darken it up. But I encourage you to play around with maybe a gradient overlay or a color overlay so that you can add some color to your portrait. So you can see how I'm going to go now and change the color of the black areas in my portrait to some a dark blue gradients and again I just wanted to keep everything very blue your color choices are completely up to you but it does make a difference when you start adding some colors and gradients are a really good way to go and create a gradual blend of colors within your portrait and make it look a little bit more finished anytime that you realize oh that's not working out for me you can always go and make any of those layer effects invisible by clicking on the um, the eyeball icon in your layers panel and then you can take off the gradient if you decide it's just not working for you. Now I'm going to apply the same edits on the gray areas layer where I double click on the layer or go to FX and then apply some gradient overlay effects to that gray areas layer. I do want to show gradation of values so for this one since I wanted to keep it within the same blue range, I went to the blue gradients so that I made sure I selected lighter blues so that you could clearly see a difference in value. So going from your darkest blues, in my case for the hair and the contours around the nose, the neck, the ear and so forth, and then using like a medium to light blue 
for those very subtle shadows on the face um, so that you could see that I went and created a value range from light to dark. You can see how this doesn't really work and trust me, I changed my mind a bunch of times. I double clicked on those effects a bunch of times, changed the gradients around. It's okay if it doesn't work the first time. You can you can keep experimenting and playing around with different options. That's the wonder of working non-destructively is that it allows you to change your mind at any point in time and fix your work. You can see at one point I started playing around with some pink gradients to create contrast. It didn't really work out for me, so keep messing around with it. Um, and, you know, eventually you'll find something that you like for your final portrait. My portrait looks good, but I felt like there was an excess of negative space in the bottom right corner, so I used my type tool and I added my son's name because after all, it is his portrait. So I wrote the name Logan. I didn't want it to take too much attention away from the portrait, so I kept it pretty small as far as the scale of the word. And then I ended up using one of the fonts that I had used for the typographic brushes earlier to try to keep a sense of uniformity and I also matched one of the colors that I had used in the gradients of the dark areas within the portrait and I felt like this finished it off at least until I changed my mind about the background but that's another story altogether so I was ready to export my final draft to export you guys are gonna go to file at the top of your workspace and select export and export as You want to select PNG as your final format to view your image and click export then save it to your flash drive or to your desktop so that you guys can submit it to me and show off to the world. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Bye!